Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. This is the things that you don't hear about. If a big old G get hit, they ain't coming to look for them. They coming to look for Mel. Mm. See how this game go? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to know how to avoid these traps and stay in your lane. I don't look at social media. I don't look at nobody podcast. So whenever I hear whatever going on in social media, whack 1069, Charleston White in this, Mob James in that, I can go and just call. Or they call me and tell me about it. And then now, but nobody called me for money. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll call me when it's a problem. It's wow. A problem. See, and that's guilt by association. Right. And that's what happens a lot to me. And I know, I don't know if you did, you just mentioned you, you, Mob James in Charleston was just in um, Dallas on on his podcast, and I know you got a phone call. Um, it was because of two different agreements. I mean, two different ways that two different people done things. What you represent, brother? You wasn't representing fatherhood. You wasn't representing grandfatherhood, and you sure wasn't represent because you got to come to my community to event the next day that you getting secretly paid for. That you getting secretly paid for. Wow. Yeah, let me ask you this. So, what, when. See, that's how real it get, but they don't wanna be real. Mm -hmm. So, this is what me and, du me and Dewberry go do the interview, right? Immediately after that, he called Unc and apologized after he walked off stage. He wasn't even in the car good. That's what Unc say, though. That's what Unc tell us. He called and apologized immediately. Mm. He felt bad. Oh, he was Phil Paul. He could. That's what I'm tell us. But I called and apologized. Nigga, I ain't never apologized to no nigga when I think I'm right. Mm. I think I'm right. The next day, I believe he said when y'all went to the event. Yeah. Uh, he was saying that you said that you felt like that he came down there to you that he was coming down there to set you guys set you up. I, I, no, I felt like that once that that the the Abdul Chappelle and the other nigga. Yeah. That, the other nigga made the video and said that him and Mob James came down there to check me. The nigga in the video said that Mob James then went on the ground and he went in the air. So. I don't see this video till Sunday, right? My, I was there Friday night at the camp to get it going. Saturday, my son going to camp. So I wasn't there Saturday and Sunday. I'm the one who helped raise the money for the event, get the promotions going, right? So I see this video Sunday about this nigga hollering about, they done come to Texas to check me. Nigga, what? So then I see the video with Dewberry. Hey man, unk, what's up with these nigga? These your people, unk. Fuck you mean they got nigga, fuck them nigga, what you? So Unks and all, man, I don't even know them niggas. Mm. So we had to sort that out. So I go to being disrespectful to everybody. Nigga, I'm finna turn on Unk. I'm finna get into it with Dewberry. Nigga, what you doing on here with this? So Dew said, nah, homie, I'm, I told that nigga I'm not having no discussion about Charleston. So we get down to the bottom of it, right? Get everything sorted out. See that this, this nigga comp the nigga, Mob James don't know him. He playing for clickbait, right? So by this time, I done, I done went off the handle. So one of the elders from Santana Block Crip uh, give me a call, man, SAG. The elder SAG. They call him the Crip on, on, on YouTube, elder brother. I got a lot of respect for him. I met him about, okay. I met him about five years ago. He from Cali? He from Cali. Okay. Uh, 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 one of the original baby Crips. Okay. Uh, so I met SAG about five years ago. So SAG reached out to me. Uh, you know, with the with the with the grandfather uncle tone. So, <clears throat> when I look at it, I know that both of them had good intentions, without a shadow of a doubt. But both lived two different lifestyles in two different parts of the world. And so, when I look at it, I hear all the things, and I do. I am on social media, so I do see the comments. You know what I mean? So, how do how do you bridge those gaps? when two people are trying to do the right thing and you know both of them? Well, let me put it like this once again. I don't look at social media, so when you say what they said, I don't know, I don't know. what was said. I only can go by what you that, heard. No, 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 not what I heard. It's how somebody treats you and therefore that makes me an unbiased urban analyst. I got it. 
because if I don't know nothing, I can't speak on it. If, if nobody brought up none of them, I wouldn't know nothing. Mm. I don't surf so I don't even look at my show, whatever I do. I don't go and look twice. Never have. I don't look at nothing twice. <laughs> have never looked at no uh, menace to society. Have not read Tookie books. Have not read Cody's book. I stay in my lane because usually what they're talking about, I've lived. But I know the rules to this game. So if I don't know nothing, unless somebody tell me, I might get a call from Ray Sean. That's Raymond Washington's daughter, which I did. Pretty boy got a call. I told Lamar, got a call. Mob James got a call. Stag got a call. Mob B got a call. I can name them on and on about stuff on social media where now it's a problem. So if I don't know nothing, that's guilt by association with me. Everybody assume that I look and want to. I ain't got time for that. Every day I'm trying to get a hustle and get something to do to make my mama proud, mm -hmm. to stay safe, and I just stay out the way. So I want that to be known. So when you ask me, about them, I really can't speak on it because I ain't looked to listen to it. I'm Makes only sense. going by exactly what whoever told me. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.